Hi Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your May 1st to the 15th, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. Now before I dive into this reading, I want to say that this reading is focusing on love, light, and positivity in order to raise our energy vibration, raise us up as individuals and people to move forward towards our light and our truth instead of bringing us down during these uncertain and scary times because there is more than enough out there to make us feel small, insignificant, afraid, and overwhelmed. Okay. So with that said, let's dive in. I'm going to be starting with your spirit guide animal cards. These are also going to be your totem animals for this time. If you see these animals in the wild or you see an image of these animals, this is really your angels and your spirit guides tapping you on the shoulder, Capricorn, saying, remember this message. So let's see what they have to say. Angel and spirit guide message for Capricorn. May 1st to the 15th, 2020. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. So we have the electric eel spirit, which says, bring your ideas to life, which I love that. And then we have the crow spirit, co-create with spirit. So you are going to be bringing your ideas to life by co-creating with spirit. Now we're going to use your chocolate cards. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Capricorn, May 1st to the 15th, 2020. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Capricorn, May 1st to the 15th, 2020. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Capricorn, May 1st to the 15th, 2020. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. So we have here life purpose. Wow, that's a that's a big one to come up. And this one right here. And clarity. Clarity towards your life purpose is coming. Clarity to yourself as you rise. Your throat chakra and your third eye chakra. A clarity towards the truth that you speak and also the purpose that you live. Yeah, the way you're moving forward. Angel and spirit guide message for Capricorn, May 1st to the 15th, 2020. Angel and Spirit Guide message for Capricorn, May 1st to the 15th, 2020. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. All right. So we have at the center of everything, Capricorn, you. You come through as the page of pentacles. There's a lot that you're learning at this time. There's a lot that you're looking at. And you are crowned by you again, the queen of pentacles. So that's awesome. That's a fantastic progression. The four of wands, which is beautiful. The four of pentacles. The two of wands. Temperance, that's a Sagittarius energy, a time frame of November 22nd to December 21st. Nine of Cups, Three of Swords, Ace of Pentacles, and Queen of Swords. Okay. So what I like here is that you're absolutely taking this gift of prosperity, of bounty, of seeds to be planted for the betterment of yourself, of like these gifts from divinity to be planted for your life purpose, quite frankly. And what I'm seeing here is that you have the Three of Swords right here. And the Three of Swords colors a whole entire reading. So a Three of Swords is a very powerful, powerful card to have. You also have my Emotional Vampire card right here with the Four of Pentacles. So there is some sort of harshness and there's some sort of hardship that has you stagnant or stuck or, yeah, stagnant, stuck, looking backwards instead of forwards, and that you are needing to overcome because there's such greatness and beauty to you. Now, it can be that you are finding a balance between the light and the dark, between the self that you show to the world and the shadow self and the sense of, you know, looking inward and saying, this is the beauty that radiates from me. I see it too. And I am embracing it because there's something here that is going to like ensnare you, hold you back, make you 
think that you can't move forward the way that you want to, but you have the Four of Wands right here, which is talking about you live happily ever after. It's talking about a power and a beauty, which is absolutely splendid. You have the repeat of the Queens. So there is a sense here of you being much more comfortable behind the scenes, of you having a regality that is seen and that is that others are embracing. And there's a sense here, especially within your mind, within what you're thinking, what you want to conceive and, and create, you are, you're cloaked, okay? So you're not really showing that to everybody else. And you're looking at a path. You're looking at a greatness of an expanse of yourself. And there's a beauty that you are embracing that others had denied you or thought you couldn't have. So we have here the electric eel spirit, and we have the crow spirit. So with all of this that is going on, you bring your ideas to life. There is a force and it can be just the doubt within yourself. It can be the negativity that you've lived through where you're held back and you're thinking, I, I can't do this. I can't move forward this way. I can't possibly, there have been so many times before that I have been beaten down, that I have, you know, tried and reached just to be burnt, just to be kicked down, just to fail. And this is saying here, that there is a power to you that you are really starting to embrace again and you bring your ideas to life. You bring your thoughts, you bring what you are striving towards to life and that leads you to the crow spirit, a co-creating with spirit. So spirit is this unseeable, powerful force, right? And for so long, you can think of it as, as a force that has always been with you but that you may not have been aware of because it's so easy to overlook. Just like it's so easy to overlook a crow or not see their beauty. But if you look deeply at this crow, you can see the purple and the blue within their wings. Crows are astoundingly smart. But when we think of them, and when crows, a flock of crows is around, it's called a murder of crows. We think of them as harbingers of darkness. Right? But there is a power to them. There's an intellect to them. And there is a beauty to them that is going to be freeing for you, Capricorn. So it's kind of like looking within the darkness and not like it is looking within the darkness of yourself. It's, and it can't even be of humanity and seeing beauty. It doesn't mean that you see beauty within the darkness, but you see beauty within the resistance of that darkness. And you start co-creating with spirit. You start creating a life so much more than you had thought it could be but also so much more real than it ever was before. So often we just live in the surface of ourselves. We do. We live right here where it's comfortable, where everybody expects it and everything is as it should be, you know, or maybe it isn't as it should be, but we don't rise. We don't rise because it's, it's hard. It's hard to rise and it's very easy to be stuck in the energy vibration of doubt, despair, deceit, dishonesty, you know, just the sense of I can't. And as you rise, as you create with spirit, as you embrace your bounty and you embrace beauty of self, you're going to see that you rise. You rise and the world rises with you. Your world rises with you. And those who can't rise, they start to just disperse. And you have here life purpose. You are moving towards your life purpose, Capricorn. You're climbing those stairs and you're seeing it clearly. What I love is that life purpose is part of the third chakra because we speak our purpose every day. Be very mindful of your words. And then here, clarity is coming. With your third eye, it's opening. You're seeing so much more clearly now than you have before. And it can be overwhelming, most definitely. You might sit there and think, oh, wow, that, that seems awful. Why would I think that? Embrace it. Look at it. Go with it. Because you are a student of the prosperity and of the seeds that you are planting. Think of it as you're a novice gardener. All right? Because I like to see the Ace of Pentacles as this beautiful gift being handed to you, but it's a seedling, right? It's raw potential. It needs to be planted. It needs to be nourished. It's just like you can have raw potential at something. You can be naturally good at drawing or naturally good at math and naturally good at whatever it is that you want to be good at. You can have a natural proclivity towards it. But if you do not nurture it, you will not grow. You will not expand. And you will not live to your full potential of that gift. And that's what this is here. This is a gift giving, a gift being given that has endless potential within you. And you are being a student of it. You're learning how to till the soil. You're learning what to plant and where. You're learning you know, how to care for what you want within your life. And you might have areas of the garden already set up. 
you might have areas that are beautiful and you might have areas that are overrun with weeds. It's time to see it and to look at that land. And now you're looking at things anew with new eyes, with new conviction. There's a conviction to you. There's a power to you with the queens that is all your own, but that is mighty. All right? I think of the queens as medieval queens. You know, there were plenty of queens who ran kingdoms, most definitely, but they ran them behind the scenes. Some did. Some ran it right up front. You know, we have Queen Elizabeth I, which is the first one that comes to my mind. You know, you have Matilda, Sophia, you know, you have queens that ran and reigned. But there is a sense here, and I see it as, you know, being behind the scenes. I see it as, you know, looking at what you want and saying, okay, I'm building it, I'm growing it, I'm expanding it, but I need this time. It's with your thoughts, clarity of mind is definitely yours. You're not going to feel the need to, you know, chatter it to everybody. And it's with the prosperity that you are embracing. It's with also the essence of you. It's what you looking at you. Because so often, Capricorn, we, we have gifts. Everybody has gifts. But the thing is, is that we think our gifts are supposed to be grand. We think we're supposed to become Oprah, right? <laughs> that, wouldn't that be? That's just absolutely terrifying to me. But wouldn't that be grand? But here, it's saying that sometimes your gifts are kindness. Sometimes your gifts are being a good listener. Sometimes your gifts are, you know, raising good children or, you know, being a good gardener. It can be little gifts that people don't see as important, but they are. Let them shine bright within you because once you embrace your gifts, no matter how insignificant you might think they are, you start to shine with a radiance and there's a radiance to you by the end of this month. Well, not the month, but by the 15th, around this time. Queen of Pentacles, you have prosperity and power. You are transformed by the gift that is given. And as you are transformed... The interesting thing is, is that you look heartbreak, pain, and disappointment straight in the eye. And it's like, you will not have this control over me. But I acknowledge you. I acknowledge this despair. I acknowledge this devastation. And I know how it has hurt me. But I will not be dictated by it anymore. I will not be run out of my own life. And that's power. That's majesty right there. That's queenliness. And so here, this is strength. This is also mourning. You know, she has this dead bird in her hand. A crippling, an inability to fly. A sense of, can I, can't I? And the interesting thing is, is that this is a three. Threes are divine numbers. Three is a divine number. So this is divinely given. Divinely forcing to face. And as you face it, you're going to see that the road's open for you. You're going to see that there is a greater expanse than you had imagined coming before you and living within you. And it leads you into the sense of knowing your mind, knowing yourself. There's a huge power in knowing yourself, Capricorn. And most people don't. Most people say they do. Oh, I'm my own best friend. Oh, I love this. Oh, I'm so happy within myself. And they can't spend a moment alone. A moment in silence. And people have been forced to because of the quarantine. People have been forced to look in but also to reevaluate what is important. And here you have done it with power and grace. And you are seeing yourself move forward. Now it can also be here that as you face this hardship and pain, an air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, helps you to move forward, or you're at this crossroad with them. And there is this sense of, now this could be a person who you adore, and this could be a person who you abhorred. Like You're like, just stay away from me. I don't like you. Leave me alone. Either way, this person is having you move forward. But this is also your thoughts, your mind. And it's here in the same line. So as you have this hardship and pain, this hurt, this, this breaking, this shattering and scattering, you have the stars and the heart coming forward. You have wishes and heart's desire being blown forward to create and cultivate seeds of greatness. And you move from being heartbroken and devastated to being a queen of your existence, 
to knowing the darker side of human nature, yes. Because to be a queen of the mind, you must know all recesses of it. And you start to move forward in this truth. Now, this is not saying you will not stumble, you will not fall. But there's a call for balance within your life. A strong Sagittarian presence here. Time frame again of November 22nd to December 21st. In balance and an understanding of self. A sense of the waters of passion and the waters of, of life coming together. How do you move? What do you want to be? What do you desire? Temperance is balance. Balance of on this earthly plane and balance on the spiritual plane. Balance of your heart and balance of your day to day. Of what needs to be done. Of what you have to do and what you need to do to feel alive. This leads you to the Four of Pentacles. The balance is going to be blocked. There's something here where you are seeking it. You are moving towards it. But the Four of Pentacles for me is the emotional vampire card. It's like people are holding you back. And it's going to be very easy to look one way, to look at something and think, oh, that's it. That's what I need to focus on. But it's going to be a trap. It's going to be a falsehood. It's going to keep you from this greatness that lies at your heart. So just know that there's going to be something where you feel like, oh, I have to be pulled this way and it's going to be out of anger or out of frustration or fear of not enough. Of, I have to hold on to this. But if you let it go, all right, and you start focusing on what is truly important. And you might say, Dean, this is important. This is bills to be paid and you know everything like that. And fair, most definitely fair. Responsibilities come first in life. But here there's something, and it can be emotionally, it can be spiritually, it can be in your day-to-day -day life, just feeling drained and overwhelmed. And like you have to hold on to the blessings because they're going to leave. Because if you don't fight every moment of every day to just stay with your head above water, you will drown. That's what this feeling is. And it's a lie. It's a lie. And once you see that, once this balance comes within you and you see that, yeah, there is that exhale. There's this moving towards divine gifts. You become a queen of your mind. You own what they were trying to take from you. You own what was being rubbed away. Now, this is not say that you, you know, you don't be, you know, kind of, this is not saying to be foolish. Okay, this is saying be smart. Count your pennies. Be wise with your money. You know, be wise with yourself. And at times you might be in a situation where, I mean, Lord knows, I've been there, where you cannot stand every moment of it. But right now, that's your lot in life. You know, and you're going to be moving forward towards something greater because now you have your eyes set on the stairway to a nirvana, to a sense of happiness and contentment. But also know that nirvana is like what that Dostoevsky say, that even if we had paradise, it would be like bubbles being popped. We would have to pop the bubble. We would have to be, we'd have to pick at it. So know that every time you get to a goal, you will be setting a new goal and be reaching even further, even more towards your truth and towards your power. This leads you to the Nine of Cups. This leads you to a radiance about you. This leads you to a love, to a joy, to a success and a power. And as you embrace that radiance, which you're not going to see all at once, people will see it around you, but you're not going to see it and you have to trust it. This leads you to a happily ever after, a moving towards your, your happily ever after, this fairy tale existence. It isn't a Disney fairy tale. It isn't all of a sudden everything ends wonderfully. It is the fairy tale that is fought for. It is the fairy tale that teaches us about life and society and people and dreams and hopes and wishes. Is a real fairy tale. One wrought with lessons, but one that is leading you towards what you desire within your life. You know, there is a poem, Happiness, and it says, Happiness is like a crystal, fair, exquisite, and clear, scattered in a million pieces. No, shattered in a million pieces, scattered, shattered, for or near. So it's shattered, it's scattered, and happiness you pick up, you have pieces of it, and you'll never have it all. And yes, some people get really mad at that poem. And they say, oh, but I want the whole sphere. I want to have it all. And that's a striving. But it's also being content with what you have. 
It's being content with where you are in your journey. And maybe you can have everything. You know, maybe you can have absolutely everything and be perfectly happy and not run ragged by it. But it's picking what's matter, what matters to you. That's how I look at it. It's picking what matters to you. And it's picking your gifts, your prosperity, your heart, and letting it shine. That leads you to your palace. That leads you to a marriage of self, to a commitment to your soul. That leads you, it can lead you to new job opportunities. It can lead you to new partnerships. It can lead you to greatness coming. But you have to see it. And as you do so, you have the digression here from the four to the three. You see it and there's heartbreak because there is heartbreak in realizing you can't be everything. You can't be an astronaut and, you know, a famous horseback rider and a ballerina and, you know, all the things. It's like dedicate yourself to something and do it well and do it with pride. And it will transform your life and it will plant the seeds of greatness for you now and years to come. Your subconscious message is the nine of wands. You have the repeat of the number nine. You're coming very close to a completion of a cycle. You're very connected emotionally to what you are doing. The nine of wands says that you're battered and bruised. You also feel like you need to fight more but you're tired of fighting. And this is saying stop. You've planted the seeds, you've grown the trees. Let it purify you. Okay, let it purify the air that is coming to you, the knowledge that is coming to you, what you are taking in as this queen of air. And as you do so, all the chaos, all the impacts, all everything, hey, you, it starts to fall away. Yes, you might hear it still, but it's not going to have the same impact that it once did. And you are set free. It's saying, do not listen to everything that the outside world says all the time. Because it's too much. It will tell you to be this, and then to be this, and then to be this, and then to be this. And it'll just run you in circles and run you ragged until you are nothing but a hollow shell of what you should be. Of who you want to be. And you feel even worse about yourself. Stand tall and stand firm. You're getting there. You're almost there, Capricorn. Your subconscious chakra message is angels and masters. I like to see this as angels and divinity right there with you. Cocooning you. Your angels are cocooning you in their wings. Brightening your power. Embracing yourself. This is the soul star chakra. This is located six inches above your head. This is you moving towards your truth towards your power, towards wisdom and healing. And your subconscious spirit animal message is the butterfly spirit. Transformation is beautiful. This transformation is beautiful. It crowns you. It moves you forward in the majesty that we see here in the cards. It's also looking at the dark and the light. Butterflies are like jewels. They are drawn to flowers. They are drawn to the beautiful. But they are also drawn to the darkness, to decaying bodies. And so... It is here that we are drawn to the light and to the dark, to the day, to the night. There's a duality of soul, and we understand it. Well, maybe we don't understand it, but we don't say that it's not beautiful. You know, we don't say that, well, maybe we do say that a monster lives within each and every human being. But if you choose not to be monstrous, but to acknowledge the monster, and I think that is true beauty. True beauty and true grace. All right, Capricorn. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. Stay safe, and I love you all. Bye.